Welcome back to the Doug Stewart Show. Tribute Tuesday, new edition. Yeah, let that ride for a minute, water. So some interesting little uh, facts about new edition. And you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show, um, Tribute Tuesday. Some little interesting facts about new edition. Uh, it says they originated by childhood friends Bobby Brown, Michael Bivens, and Ricky Bell started a vocal group. The group had included two other friends, Travis Pettis. Oh, wow, these guys got the same story as me. Uh, Travis Pettis and Corey Rackley. Did y'all know that? Did y'all know there were two other members of New Edition originally, you know, just like me? This is real stuff. Says all five kids lived in the Orchard Park housing projects in Roxbury. That's my projects. They later met Brooke Payne, a local manager and choreographer, um, who encountered the boys at a local talent show in Roxbury. After an audition for Payne, he gave them the name New Edition to signify they were a new edition of the Jackson Five. I like that. Okay. Uh, I was part of the group, and I didn't even know this. Rackley left the group and was replaced by another neighborhood friend, Ralph Tresvent. Wow, so Ralph basically came in at the end. Um, who Bell, Bivens, and Brown were already acquainted with and sang with Ricky in a group called Ricky and Ralph. Travis Pettis eventually would lead the group as well. Aw, oh, damn, you left New Edition on your own? Boy, you got to look back and you got to feel like the biggest dummy. You on your own left New Edition. Oh, you know, I got kicked out of the group. These cats just left on their own. Travis Pettis eventually will leave the group as well. Later, Payne uh, brought in his nephew, Ronnie DeVoe, to replace Pettis as the group's fifth member. And the rest, as they say, is history. Wow. Wow. So I didn't get a chance to mention this yesterday, man. Did you see this story about Michael Crabtree and Akeem Tlaib? And angry Michael Crabtree, uh, angry Michael Crabtree said he chose not to retaliate against Akeem Tlaib after the Denver Broncos cornerback ripped his gold chain off during and after a play. <laughs> Crabtree said it was the business decision not to hurt the Oakland Raiders, by responding. He says, quote, I can't react or the referees are going to kick me out, Crabtree said, then I'm the, and then I'm the bad guy. Crabtree also called to leave fake as a football player. Acting, Crabtree said, you aren't defending anybody up like that. You hard, you tough, you snatch a chain in front of the police and run off. Childish, man. Quote, this is from Akeem Tlaib. He's just been wearing that gold chain all year. It's just growing on me. What? Although I will say, I watched a couple of Raiders games this year, and it seemed purposeful, or it seemed like on purpose, that Michael Crabtree had this gold chain on, and he didn't try to tuck it away. Like, he was wearing it out. Like, he was Bobby Brown in, you know, a new edition video back in 1978 with the little chain. I did notice that. Uh, here's the quote continues. He says, I said, if he wears that chain in front of me, I'm going to snatch it off. So he wore it in front of me, so I snatched it off. <laughs> what? <laughs> now, listen, I don't know if, 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 if Akeem Tlaib could kick Michael Crabtree's ass or whatever, man, but I just thought the whole thing was funny as hell like a lot of y'all have. Y'all heard about the story. Like, the look on Michael Crabtree's face was like, after he snatched it off, was like, did this nigga just snatch off my chain? <laughs> like, he was in shock. He was in shock. Like, this guy just snatched off my chain. Like, this is 1980s, and we're on a corner street in Brooklyn or something like that. You know, I'm going to get you, sucker. He snatched my chain off. I, 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 it was shocking. I mean, that's one of the funniest and most shocking things I've ever seen in my life. And I'm going to tell you, man, there's, there's a lot of cats that I think are fake. 
and there's a lot of cats out there that are tough guys when, you know, when officials are around or whatever, or not so tough in, in, in other aspects of life, man. If it wasn't for football, and he said as much in his career in, in interviews that I've read, if Aqib Tlaib wasn't a good football player, he would really, really, really be on them streets. He would. That dude. He like old dog. <laughs> like like Aqib Tlaib is like old dog from Minister Society. Young, black, and don't give a F. Yeah. Yeah, like, 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 there's a lot of fake tough guys. And he's my homeboy, and I love him to death, man. Um, you know, uh, Kevin Garnett, I always say Kevin Garnett's a fake tough guy. If you look at Kevin Garnett, man, he always starting stuff, but he don't never get into no fight. He don't really never do nothing. He's just a lot of talk. You know, he like a peacock. He just, you know, showing his feathers or whatever. Um, Akeem Tlaib, you know, oh, Akeem Tlaib is, uh, Tlaib is about that life. You can tell. Like him and Pac-Man, it's funny they both play cornerbacks. Like if they didn't play football, man, they would be in a totally, totally different place in their life on them streets. <laughs> yeah, right. My man Jay Fish, the microwave, says, let's not forget to leave uh, licking shots at his sister's boyfriend. That's right. And he got shot this summer. Like you can just tell, a lot of cats are fake. They 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 tough. They they this that and the other whatever. Nah, they ain't really tough, you know. And I'm not saying that Talib is like like some is super nice with his hands or nothing like that. But I'm just saying that he really, really got that old dog edge to him. Like football saved this cat's life. I'm serious. Like if he didn't have football, he's the type of cat that, that that to me, if he didn't have football, that he'd probably be in dead or, or dead or in jail right now. Clearly, same thing for Pac-Man, which I've been trying to get on the show. Um, you snatch a man's chain off on national TV in an NFL game? What's the matter with you? <laughs> huh? Huh? What? I, I, I mean, that was crazy. That was real, real Real crazy. 404-382-033. It was shocking. 404-382-0338. You can also email me at Doug at the Doug Stewart Show.com from T Dub. He says, Grow up people. That ish was part of the culture in the 80s. No Doug. His ass would be dead. Yeah, I just said that. It's funny you say that because I just said that. Like he strikes me as a dude that would either be dead. You know, if he didn't have football, he'd either be dead or he'd be in jail. You know? And I'm not, I am not. don't throw that around lightly. Like, I'm serious. Clearly, this dude is a loose cannon. And you're right. If you don't know, if you're a greenhorn and you're young, and that comment that I made about, you know, snatching off your chain in 1988. So that was, like, the big thing. Like, cats used to straight snatch your gold chain off, you know, and I, I guess sell it, pawn it, or whatever, make some money or whatever. But that was a big thing. The movie I'm Going to Get You Sucker is based on that whole Snatching gold chains and the gold chain phenomenon of the like mid late eighties. Yeah, you you go around certain cats in certain parts of the neighborhood. You had to put your jewelry away, just like Smokey and Friday. You had to put your jewelry away. <laughs> yeah, you had to put your jewelry away, man. Back in the eighties, you had to put your jewelry away. You couldn't wear. Uh, certain sneakers, you couldn't wear certain jackets, and I'm sure it probably still goes on to a degree. But, shoot, back in 1987, you can't be in the wrong place and have on a fresh pair of Jordans. You couldn't be in the wrong place and have on a sheepskin coat or a bomber jacket. You, you couldn't be in the wrong place and have a nice gold chain on and expect it not to get took. Right. So my man, Aqib Tlaib, you know, he had a little flashback to the 80s, man. Crazy, crazy, crazy video. Like, I thought it was a joke almost. Like, it looked like a joke. He's a freaking menace to society. <laughs> Aqib Talib is a menace to society. Wow. Back in three minutes, we'll wrap up today's show.